Welcome to lesson number five on programming Python. This is part of the ITCSE computer science series of videos and in today's session we are going to be exploring 8.3 file handling. Now up to this point whenever we have entered data into our Python window or REPL program or wherever you're doing your programming as soon as we have closed that window the data which has been entered has been lost forever. And when we've been reading data, this has normally been from either a constant or a one or a two dimensional array. Now, what we are going to be doing today is looking at how we can use external files. So how can we open and close a file and read and write data to it? We need to be able to understand the purpose of storing data in a file to be used by a program. And we need to have a look at how we can read and write single items of data or multiple items of data to a file. Now, you will be able to see your lesson objectives on this slide here, and do make note of the objective in blue. This is particularly difficult, and we will be exploring this in probably part two of the video. Now, these are the kind of rules which you need to follow, and by the time you have a look at this lesson, there should be a video on the left-hand side here. If you are watching this video and you are not a St. Andrews student, obviously do drop me a message and I can give you access to these slides. Now, our file handling rules are, if you open a file, make sure you close it at the end. If we are going to use W or R, okay, W stands for write and R stands for read, we want to be able to write data to a file so that's going to be append and we also want to be able to read data from a file as well and we need to make sure we understand the differences between a w and r so write is going to be w a is going to be append which means you're adding data to an existing file and r is just going to be reading data from an existing file now the other things here are that you need to be able to understand how to add a file directory for a file that's in a different folder. So basically, if we are writing a Python program, let's say on Windows or Mac, and if we're trying to read data from a file which is inside a different directory, we're gonna have to specify the file path. And we're gonna have a look at how that works inside REPL today. And if you have any questions about how this might work locally on a computer, do drop me a message underneath this video or ask me this question in class. Now, going on to the next slide. This is our sample code which we are going to be working with today. So again, this is linked underneath the video. I'm going to go across to my REPL window and you should have access to this code. Now, you'll be able to see some comments at the top there. So what we're doing is we're reading and writing data from files. When you work with external files, they must be in the same directory. Now, at the moment, everything is inside one folder. We've got main.py, lines.txt, lines1.txt, and people.csv. This is all in the same folder. Now, when I'm saying different folder or a different directory, what I mean here is that if we create a folder here, oh, that's a file. If we create a uh, folder here and call this uh, test1, and inside test1, if we put uh, another file here and call this test.txt, um, that would basically mean that we are trying to read data uh, from a different file. So te uh, test.txt. Okay. Now, if we were running a Python program and we wanted to read data from the file which was inside here, we would need to specify the file path or the directory which would specify where that file is. Now, looking at this first section of code here, what we are going to be doing is we are going to have a look at how we can read data from this CSV file. Now, CSV stands for Comma Separated Values and probably one of the most common file types which you can find across the internet when we are reading data. So this is just a text file. There's no formatting for data here. Data is just going to be inside rows and columns. What we are doing here on line number seven is we're saying file is equal to open and we are opening up the name of the file which is called people.csv. 
Note the inverted commas here. When we are opening up a file, we must use the inverted commas, the name of the file, and then the file type. We're then using comma and R, which stands for read mode. Now, once we have written this first line, which you can see here, what we need to do is we need to take the contents of that file and they're going to be stored, let's say, in a variable somewhere temporarily. And if we want to display that information, we're going to do print and content. And remember that rule which I mentioned a few minutes ago, we always close a file once we have finished working with it. Now, you're probably thinking that why would we close the file if we might work with it later on in the program? The best rule to follow here is that if you finish working with a file, in this instance, just close it. You can always open it again later. If we press on run here, what we're going to be able to see here is information has been printed out. Harry, 23, engineer. Bob, 24, teacher. And hi, my name is Bob. Now, let's go into that people.csv file. If we look inside here, we have read lines one and two. There is not any more information here to be read. If I enter a new piece of information now, and I enter Rob, I am forever 21, and let's put my job title, so DPO, and go back to main.py. If we run this file again, and clear what we can see over here, you'll be able to see that it's now read three pieces of data. So this is how we read data from a CSV file. Going down, the next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to read data one line at a time. And what we're opening up here is lines.txt in read mode. Now, if we go over to lines.txt, let's have a look at what is inside here. Inside here, we've got, hi, my name is Bob. Hi, my name is not Bob and some random letters, okay? But if you notice, these lines of data here, it stops printing at D. These have not been printed out. And the reason why they have not been printed out is because we've only asked for these lines of data to be printed out. So literally, we've just taken the first line and it's printed line one. We've taken second line and it's printed line two and so on. Now, what I'm going to do here is, just so you can see how this works, I'm going to copy this for a minute and delete it. I'm going to clear the console window, and I'm going to run this again. And what you'll be able to see here is now we only have the first line being printed out. I'm going to paste that code back in again so you can see how this works. And if we wanted to output the rest of the information, we might need to add more lines of code. Now. This is probably not the most efficient way to read data, but this is the easiest way for us to start. Going down here, we're now going to have a look at how would we write data to a file. So everything from this txt file and the csv file so far, we've just read data. And csv and txt are different file types. If you download these onto either your Windows or your Mac, and if you were to open up these programs, on a Windows computer, this would open up in Notepad. And a .csv file would default, or the default program it would open up in, is going to be Microsoft Excel. You can quite simply open this in Google Sheets if you're using cloud storage. Now, going down here, what we want to do is we want to write data to a file. So only worth using W if the file doesn't exist. And what that basically means is that a few moments ago, we looked at the words append, write, and read. And we only use W if the file doesn't exist on the left-hand side. And we're going to explore that concept in just a moment. But firstly, let's have a look at what's being asked here. This is a nice, simple variable. Name is equal to input, what's your name? Okay, work this in lesson one of computer science. So quite straightforward. What we're doing here on this line, line 33, file is open, lines 1txt, in write mode. And then what we are going to do is we're going to use file.write name plus slash n. So we're taking the variable, we're writing it into the file which we opened, which is called line t uh, lines 1txt, 
and slash n, we're putting it on a new line and then we're closing that file. Now, lots of people always ask, is file uh, a built-in function inside Python? Actually, this is just an identifier. So you can change this to be a more meaningful name if you wish, but make sure if you're gonna change file, you change every single occurrence where it repeats itself inside this program. So I could say file one, file one, file one, and theoretically this should still work. Let's give that a try. Pressing run, what is your name? Now going over to lines.txt, we've got Rob currently. If I write in here, Harry, and press enter, and let's type in Harry again. Okay, enter a different name, uh, Jenny. Okay, program's finished. Now, we were only asked to enter one piece of data. And the reason why we've been asked a couple of times is because we're also looking at an append function, which we'll come to in a minute. But let's just see if the name Harry was put into our file. And you can see that Harry was put in here. Now, if you skip back around 20 or 30 seconds, you'll be able to see that originally there was another piece of data in here, which is called Rob. And by using the right function, it over or it managed to overwrite the piece of data which was in there. Now, as I said to you here, when we're using the right function, if a file exists, it's not going to create a new file on the left hand side. But what it is going to do is it's going to overwrite existing data which is inside this file. So if you don't want to overwrite data inside that file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to append data. And this is the last part of this video here. And if you look at this file, lines.txt, let's have a look at what data is already inside here. You'll be able to see we've got D, G, S, G, D, and some random other information, Harry and Jenny. These two pieces of data which were previously entered. There are currently 17 pieces of data in here. Now, when would we use append? So, if we want to put data into a file, if we don't want to overwrite the data that is in there, what we will do is we will use this append function. And now when we run this program again, remember there are 17 pieces of data, line 17, is Jenny. We're going to be asked to enter a name. That's going to be put into lines.txt. We're going to be asked to enter a different name. It's going to put a piece of data on a new line each time using slash n. Let's run. And we're going to enter Bob. That's going to go into lines1.txt. We don't care about that. We're going to enter, is this working? Not really a name, but that's fine. Let's enter a different name. Is your teacher wrong? And what we are going to see here is, has this information been put onto lines 18 and 19 in this file? And what you'll be able to see here is, yes, it has. So this is how append works. Now, the last thing I'm going to demonstrate is, remember, if the file exists, it won't create a new file. If we change this name, lines.txt, or lines1.txt to lines2.txt, when we run this program, you're going to see a new file created on the left-hand side. And we are going to enter Bob. And here you'll be able to see a new file has been created. Now, I hope this is clear. And we're going to be moving on to the next part of file handling in the next video, probably in the next lesson uh, that we have on lesson five. The most important thing for now is that you create a program and you practice writing how we can append data, how we can read data from a file, and how we can write data, and do experiment with .txt files and .csv files.